Shove it, man! Shove it, squad. I've got a real punch to the gut today. So TNA did these things called one night only shows. They tried to pass them off as pay-per-view quality, but the fans weren't falling for any of that bird turd. These shows were some of the most lifeless, pointless, clueless shows in wrestling history. Basically, in 2013, TNA was struggling to meet the network demands for pay-per-views, so TNA combated this by deciding to do a monthly show where storylines did not matter. The buy rate did not matter. The wrestling did not matter. Because these shows were just a bunch of wrestlers fighting for absolutely no reason. Storylines do not exist in this world, and it has nothing to do with current happenings in TNA. The only reason these things existed is so that TNA could produce them by filming a bunch of house show matches and calling it a pay-per-view, because the house show centred around some lame tournament. I think there's been 52 of these vile things. These shows were so unpopular that it's said that you will enter the Guinness Book of World Records if you can sit through just 10 of them. The producers didn't care on these shows, the wrestlers didn't care on these shows, the commentary didn't care on these shows, and the fans didn't care about these shows. It was just to meet the network's quota for pay-per-views and nothing else. Oh yeah, make some extra money by tricking gullible fans into thinking these were pay-per-view quality shows. From what I can tell, there is literally just one out of 52 pay-per-views that could be worth a watch. Hardcore Justice 2 from 2013. It has TNA debuts for Funaki and Bob Holly. Returning wrestlers from the past, Sin Slash, Devon Storm, Brother Runt and Judas Macias. And most importantly, the only good match in the history of One Night Only shows, a tag ladder match between Bad Influence and the Young Bucks. Wrestlers would just wrestle a very safe, boring style on these shows. After all, no one was ever going to see them, right? Well, I'm not interested in good stuff. From my perspective, the only thing worse than bad is boring. The Hawk spends his life watching the worst stuff in wrestling, and today's one night only pay-per-view is the most famous for being bad. There could very well be a worse one, but it's not as famous. It's Knockout Knockdown from 2016. And let me tell you, this show sucks Sonny Siaki's ass. This show is a women's only pay-per-view and it's taking place when TNA is in a complete mess financially. I'm glad they've managed to sort that out nowadays. You actually don't hear anything about their finances anymore. Let's find out if it's as bad as the narrative says it is. The show starts out with an exhausted, aged and out of shape Jeremy Borash who's here to desperately try and get us excited for this pay-per-view. He tells us that tonight will be crowning the Queen of the Knockouts. They will win a stupid cheap crown from a kid's toy shop. There will be 8 matches tonight with the winners of each match going onto a gauntlet to crown the Queen of the Knockouts division. He tells us that the top talent in female wrestling is here tonight. He's interrupted by Maria Canellis bennett She won't be wrestling though. Apparently her and her husband The Miracle will be co-hosting the show. I miss these two in this character. I guess they've aged too much and Impact can't use them like this anymore. Bennett says he's put his hair into a ponytail because he's excited to watch the show. He's offended that JB will be crowning a queen tonight because Maria already is one. Maria says she's got eight girls who are not signed to the TNA roster who will be part of the show tonight and she brings them all out. I know some of them but no idea who some of the others are. There's a lot of boob jobs in that ring right now. Maria asks the crowd if the women in the ring are beautiful, and no one cheers. Maria goes off on a complete tangent, ranting about how she was once considered pretty, but then she went on to be more than pretty, and she uses being in Playboy as an example for some reason. Now she introduces the girls. The first is Ali, who kisses her ass and tells Maria how beautiful she is. As you can tell, this is not exactly following a normal pay-per-view format. Ali says all the girls in the ring are trashy and she's classy. Mike says that he likes her. Now a lady called Jamie who's very proud of her biceps. She challenges Mike to a flex off. Maria's not impressed. Veda Scott is next. She's very small. She asks Maria to do a secret handshake with her. What are we even watching here? Maria is telling her off. We're 11 minutes into the show now. A blonde woman who looks like Madison Rain on steroids introduces herself now. This is Barbie Hayden. She's very popular with the crowd. She has a dominatrix gimmick. Leva Bates now who has a geek gimmick. She says she's just like everyone else in the crowd. A geek. She'd be really popular nowadays with this gimmick. Wow, a very young looking Diana Peraza's here. I love listening to her talk for some reason. She says she'll win by any means necessary. Shelly Martinez up next who has face paint and a sombrero. She has obviously wrestled for TNA before as Salinas in LAX. She says she always has been and always will be a knockout. The last lady is Alison Kay, aka Sienna who'd go on to be a knockouts champion. She says that Maria sucks and she should put her finky up to show if she's fancy. Mike does it and he gets told off. Very entertaining hosting from those two. This is going on for way too long though, but I think TNA felt like they needed to try and give us a reason to care about these unknown women. All of the matches are now revealed. Borash gets some of the knockouts names wrong. He calls one Vader Sky. <laughs> Vader is scared of Rosemary. This is still going on. They slowly reveal each match. It feels like all the signed TNA knockout girls will be heels, but I might be wrong. 
The segment finally ends after fucking 25 minutes. Jesus, imagine paying for this shit. Still no match though, because we get a recap from the past winners of Knockdown. It was Gail Kim, Madison Rain, and Awesome Kong. What a surprise, the three women who were always pushed to the moon in TNA. Nothing against Kong and Gail, but come on, Madison Rain. What did they see in this girl? I've never understood it. We are now half an hour into this wrestling pay-per-view with no wrestling whatsoever. Now we waste more time being told that Maria will be on commentary. Matthews thanks her for bringing some entertainment to the show. He's right. Finally, the first match. It will be Alison K. Oh no, they cut to a pre-match interview. Alison K, aka Sienna, guarantees a win. She'll be taking on Gail Kim, so I shouldn't make guarantees that your ass can't cash. Poor Mike Bennett doesn't have a chair. I hope they're not going to make him stand for the next two hours. We would see this match a million times over the next few years, but I think this is their first meeting. Sienna starts with the power game and Gail seems to be a bit intimidated. Gail tries to quicken the pace, but she runs into a brick wall. Gail then dodges a charge in the corner and runs into the ring with a crossbody. She gets caught and thrown with the Scott Hall special, the sack of shit. Gail tries a wheelbarrow now, but again Sienna overpowers her with a German. Kim also crashes into the corner pole, so it's not going well for her. Gail keeps trying and does hit the crossbody in the corner. She starts trying to wrap Sienna's leg around the pole, but doesn't do it for some reason. They come back to the ring where not a lot is really happening. Stay tuned, it all soon changes from boring to bad. Gail tries a head scissors, but Sienna overpowers her. Gail then tries to charge into a victory roll, but that doesn't work either, and Sienna puts on an arm bar for like a second. Lots of reversals going on in slow motion. Gail gives Sienna double knees while she takes a while to tie her shoelaces. Kim is back in it now and she hits a running drop kick and a crossbody from the top for a two. Sienna manages to fight off the eat defeat, but she gets DDT'd. Gail Kim wants to hit a dive, but Mike the Miracle Bennett distracts her for some reason. Gail dives onto him with a flying fist, but Maria shoves her into the ring pole whilst her ass almost falls out of dress. Mike Bennett is busted open and he's screaming about how crap this all is. Gail Kim is counted out, not a finish we see often. In fact, we don't see Gail losing often. Sienna advances in the gauntlet. The match was fine, it's a C. Gail has a mic and says she's sick of Maria and this all ends tonight. She challenges Maria and her husband to a mixed tag match tonight. You know how I said things would soon change from boring to bad? It's that time. Shelly Martinez has a pre-match promo talking about her grandma passing away. She says tonight's match will be a tribute to her dead grandma. Oh dear. It's Shelly Martinez. She literally looks like a hooker. What size those two lumps on her chest? She hangs upside down for some reason. The camera zooms in on her ass a few times. She'll face AEW's Rebel. Two ladies who are more about sex appeal than wrestling skill. Rebel barely has any wrestling experience at this point. She does the splits on the ropes and makes her ass shake up and down whilst JB complains that they aren't filming it in 3D. Okay, let's go. They start with a cheer off from the crowd. They call each other ugly skanks as they pace around the ring screaming that they work out. Martina shoves Rebel in the corner and complains that she wasn't ready due to her jacket still being on. Rebel takes ages taking her jacket off and then she gets an arm drag into an arm bar by Shelly. Rebel makes the ropes. Now she screams get off. She sounds like a cow mooing in the fields. Martinez drop toe holds her and puts on an interesting submission hold for like a second. Rebel tries a kick but Shelly catches it and throws her into the splits. Martinez drop kicks her for a two. Rebel then turns it around with an eye poke and a diving something. They trade bad looking holds now, I have no idea what they're going for. Then they collapse to the floor and the comrade team goes silent because they can't describe what is happening. Rebel chokes her in the corner with her boot. She tries a handspring but completely misses it and it was in slow motion. Shelly fights back with some hair drags now. This goes on for a while. I had to reload this bit. Shelly tries a crossbody but she's barely caught and then they fall on the floor again. Shelly Martinez quickly hits a DDT and Rebel bails to the outside. Shelly slowly runs against the ropes. She wants to dive but somehow she gets caught up in the ropes. The crowd laugh. Rebel shoves her back in the ring and she somehow covers her for the free. The comrades team are hilarious here when they talk about the speed of Shelly Martinez and how slippery the ropes can get. You can just tell they were face palming like mad at this point. Well, they were nice to look at, but if you want to watch a hot girl rolling around twerking, get a girlfriend. Or pay for one. Don't pay for this. It will leave your computer covered in piss. Oh no, it's another gorilla advert. I said I'd get an ad blocker, but I've not got round to it. Not even sure if it'll work on their website. We cut away from that so quickly that Rebel isn't even shown celebrating. I guess they wanted to move on. We'll see her again in a gauntlet match later tonight. The match definitely sucked both Sunny and Solo's asses. It's an S. Velvet Sky of a pre-taped interview now. She credits Jackie Moore with training her to be the wrestler that she is today. She says Jackie was her favourite feud. When the hell did they even feud? It might interest you to know that Velvet would only wrestle five more times after this match and then would retire from wrestling. 
Ali is out now, it's weird seeing her doing a stuck up bitch gimmick, kind of the opposite of what she'd end up doing. She also has a pre-match interview, she says Velvet is one half of the beautiful people, and she was probably beautiful five years ago. Here is Velvet Sky then, she has those army leggings on that everyone seems to be wearing nowadays, so she's a trendsetter. Ali attacks her before she can do the ass shake thing on the ropes. Ali's really loud and she slams Velvet into the turnbuckles over and over again. Velvet eventually blocks one and she starts doing the exact same thing. She then drop toe holds Ali into the corner and almost rolls her up. Velvet gets several close pinfall attempts now. Watching that last match and then watching this one made me actually appreciate that Velvet was a far better wrestler than people gave her credit for. Velvet eventually makes a mistake and crashes into the turnbuckle. Ali's trying really hard for her character work here, I guess she really wanted to be signed by TNA. Velvet hits some clotheslines and a back elbow. She then hits some slow motion kicks and a running net breaker. Velvet almost wins with a face buster but Ali has her foot on the ropes. Velvet continues dominating with a slow motion Russian leg sweep. Out of nowhere Ali double legs Velvet and covers her with her feet on the ropes for the free. Earl asks Ali if she cheated and of course she says no. Velvet asks to shake hands, then she kicks her in the gut and hits a stone cold stunner. Why? That was never a finisher, how random. The match was a waste of time, it's a D because of Ali's character work. Imagine if you paid for this. Next up, an interview with Jade who says she's enjoying hurting people in TNA. Remember when people hyped her up as a future star? What the hell happened? On to the next match, it's the nerd Lever Bates. She also has an interview where she reveals that her and Jade used to be close friends. And here's Jade. I have to say the Doas have great theme music but I'm not sure it works as a wrestling song. They start with a pose off for some reason. Lever starts doing arm twists but then she spins around like a ballerina. She stops messing around now and kicks Jade in her head. Again she's messing around, she throws her bowler hat at Jade. This distracts Jade and she almost gets rolled up. Lever dodges Jade in the corner and then does a forward roll into a spear. The bigger Jade stops her offence with a backbreaker. JB tells us how Lever likes to Netflix and chill. Josh Matthews is in hysterics and JB doesn't know what this means. Jade now has the bowler hat. She stamps on it and kicks it at the camera. This match just got personal. Jade puts on a bridging submission but as usual it only lasts a little bit of time. Jade also does a tarantula on Lever. This is the best match so far. Bates almost gets an upset schoolgirl pin before Jade boots her back down. Jade with a big suplex now. I bet Lever's regretting messing around earlier on. Lever's unable to make a comeback as Jade back suplexes her with a bridging pin for a two, nice. Bates now finally manages to land a move with Gut Stabber. The women make it up at nine. Lever hits some kicks and a running knee lift. She also does the Booker T arm drag kick thing. Bates then lands a Northern Light suplex for a two. Jade stops her again with a bridging German suplex for a two of her own. Jade starts doing a goofy run but Lever drop toe holds her on the ropes. Lever kicks her away as the crowd are fully behind her. She does a handstand into a knee drop in the corner. Lever Bates then comes really close to winning with a double stomp to Jade's back. She tries another dive but this time Jade stops with a kick. Lever fights her off and she's about to dive but she slips off the ropes. Lever then slips back into the ring where Jade beats her with an STO. I felt a bit bad for Lever Bates for slipping there because this wasn't actually a bad match for the time. It's a C+. Straight into our next match, Vader Scott is also trying really hard for her character work. She's a feisty little redhead. Vader Scott does a pre-match promo for some reason, it feels like a low budget porno. She's scared of her match with Rosemary tonight. Vader Scott identifies as non-binary, whatever that means. Oh come on, people mean that I don't do any research for these videos. And now it's time for a segment, because I just love segments. It's time for yet another Taz Factoid. I got a factoid for both of you guys, I got a boil on my ass. Vader Scott identifies as neither male or female, but she also doesn't identify as transgender. There's your factoid, you can shove it. Look it up if you don't get it. Here's Rosemary of Crazy Steve. I miss the old Marilyn Manson entrance music. Around this time, Rosemary was being severely underutilised by TNA as they continue to be obsessed with Madison Rain. The match doesn't start for a while because Vader is scared. She has a mic and says seeing Rosemary up close has scared her even more. Vader thinks they live in a cave. She takes her glasses off and accuses Rosemary of being the one who's scared because she has Crazy Steve with her for backup. Rosemary attacks Vader while she watches Steve leave the ring. Rosemary throws her into the map but Vader fights off her next attack with a kick. Vader hits her head scissors and another kick. Rosemary tries to come back but she runs straight into a Vader rolling kick. Scott wants to dive but Steve distracts her. Rosemary catches her dive and gives her a back breaker. Rosemary also uses her legs to hang Vader over the ropes. Crazy Steve licks Rosemary at the same time. Vader blocks Rosemary's offence and puts on the Hell's Gate submission. Rosemary powers her up and buckle bombs her for a two count. Rosemary then puts on an interesting submission now. Vader reverses it into a pin and then a wacky submission of her own. Rosemary bites her boot to get her off. Not sure that one would hurt. Vader's now firing up and she does a 1%er for a two. 
Vader Scott takes her down again for Spear. She also does a running drop kick which misses. Rosemary keeps getting up from her kicks. Steve distracts Vader again and when she turns around Rosemary sprays her with the blue mist. That's a free. Look, if this was a TV match, I'd say fair enough. Excellent character work for both girls. But this is a pay-per-view. I'm surprised TNA didn't sign Vader Scott. I quite like her. I give this match a D+. I realised after making this script that being non-binary means I should not be calling her she. Instead, we must say they. Watching the Hawk is like an education in the world, not just wrestling. Things are about to get bad again now. A lady with a robotic voice says she's about to bring pain and pleasure. Here is Barbie Hayden. I'm really surprised she never made it in wrestling. Well, based solely on looks. She demands Earl holds the ropes open for her as the camera zooms in on her. I've changed my mind. I think she looks more like Alexa Bliss on steroids. She tells the crowd they should all be standing and cheering for her. She'll be facing Raquel. Oh god, this isn't going to be good. Raquel gets off to a surprisingly good start of a couple of arm drags. She really sucks at running the ropes though. Barbie mashes her down. Raquel seems confused by the rules of the match. Raquel shows some more agility with another arm drag. She almost gets the roll-up victory now. Barbie Irish whips her and Raquel gets confused on how to run the ropes again. The crowd boo. Hayden hits a running knee in the corner. She also hits a fisherman suplex and Raquel just about kicks out. Barbie Irish whips her again, but wisely keeps hold of her arm to ensure she does it right this time, with knees to the gut to follow. Barbie puts on an abdominal stretch now and Raquel is able to counter this into a head scissors. She also does a monkey flip and a hurricanrana. Raquel does some sort of backstabber and then she moves in to try and do an armbar. One of Barbie's fans appear on the ring apron to distract Raquel. Barbie gets her up and hits a DDT off the ropes. That's the three. Raquel is a bad loser so attacks the friends after the match. I have to say, Raquel was better than I expected. If you ignore the fact that she can't do the basics, i.e. running the ropes, she had some moves. It's an S, but it's not an S in the same way as the Rebel vs Shelly match. Up next it's Diana Peraza. Wow, look how skinny she was back then. She's very excited in her pre-match interview. She's jumping everywhere. The ref tries to calm her down. She takes on gap-eyed bitch Madison Rain. Gianna is desperate to shake her hand, but Madison is freaked out. Madison almost rolls her up straight away. Gianna says that that was so good and that was incredible. So she has a Kylie Ray gimmick. Madison almost pins her again in slow motion. Gianna again tells her how cool it was. Can you imagine paying for this fucking show? They trade arm drags and Madison is actually wrestling the best match of her career and it still sucks. Diana screams that was awesome. Someone in the crowd yells shut up. They shake hands again but this time Diana smacks her from behind. Diana has now turned heel. They fight on the outside of the ring where Diana throws Madison into the steps. The comrades team are bored and they're making jokes about the Shelly Martinez match. Matthew says he hopes to forget that match ever happened. Diana Praza almost picks up the win with a knee lift and a clothesline. She's dominating, she hits a suplex, but then she misses a knee drop. She also misses her back sent on. Madison gives her an Inzaguri kick for a double down. This is still going on for some reason. Madison gets a two from a Northern Lights now. She also hits a big boot. Madison then gets on the top rope, but she misses her crossbody. Diana then does manage to hit the back sent on, which would hurt a lot more now in 2022. Diana spends time arguing with the referee, and when she turns around, she walks into the crossroads. That's the three. We'll still have to sit for another qualifying match of the world's most boring pay-per-view though. At this point, I'm really struggling to keep going with this. It's so boring. Jenna Jameson is still here. She's proud of her biceps. She takes on Marty Bell. This is another girl that I've never really got around to seeing what TNA saw in her. Jameson keeps slamming her. Marty manages to fight back after a while and she hits an ass to the face. Then she misses a kick and Jameson gives her a pump handle slam. Jameson also gives her power slam. Jameson then hits the worst looking catatonic of all time, but Marty gets the rope. Marty wins a stupid match of a Russian leg sweep clothesline thing. There's no need to grin. It's an S for being lifeless. So that's the qualifying done. Hooray, I feel like I deserve an award. How about a punch to the gut? At least Maria and Mike are up next. I don't find them boring. So on this exclusive knockouts pay-per-view, Mike Bennett will be wrestling in the mixed tag. They face Gail Kim and her mystery partner, DJZ, for some reason. At least he isn't doing that awful air horn thing. I don't hate him, I hate the bromance gimmick. It was one of the most ear-splitting, irritating gimmicks of all time. Maria doesn't want to start the match with Gail, so there's an argument for a while. The men aren't allowed to wrestle the women. She acts like she agrees to it, but then she tags Bennett straight away. Then they tag back again. And again. Once again, can you imagine paying for this? We seem to be playing a game of musical tags, but without music. The men finally start wrestling, but the DJ beats up Bennett. He hits a diving back elbow from the corner. Maria randomly runs into the ring and she misses her slap on DJZ. This allows Bennett to hit the shutter press smack you one punch. Bennett gives him the cab driver slam for a two count. 
Bennett's wound has reopened on his head again. That doesn't stop him and he hits a big boot. Awkward moment now as Bennett wants Maria to stamp on DJZ but everyone else thinks it's a pin. The crowd are groaning and sounding really restless at this point. The Miracle is unable to hit his second rope suplex and DJ dives on him with a crossbody. In this knockouts pay-per-view, the women still haven't properly been in this match. Maria pulls Gail off the ring apron as she doesn't want to face her. The men carry on fighting with the DJ hitting a rolling DDT. Maria breaks it up. Now Gail chases Maria around the ring. She chases her into the ring and hits a spear. The Miracle has Gail by her hair, but DJ hits him with a Lufez to stop that. He tries to hit his DDT finisher from the ropes, but Bennett counters it with the Miracle in progress, and that's the three. So the women were completely pointless in this match, and that match was a complete waste of time. It's meant to be a knockouts pay-per-view, and you don't have the women wrestle. It's an S. Just the main event gauntlet then. Barbie Hayden will start this match with Marty Bell. Can't get over how blatantly pervy the cameramen have been tonight. Sex sells, or not in this pay-per-view's case. They both argue over who is going to pose in front of the camera. They could throw each other out easily, but they can't be bothered. They argue for quite a while. Madison Rain is the next lady out. Madison tries to eliminate Barbie, but Marty saves her. Madison's tiny, just throw her out, Barbie. Entrant number four is the god-awful Rebel. She has a bunch of wacky spin kicks. Marty and Rebel are friends in the same dollhouse faction, so they've got the advantage. They do a cringy celebration. The crowd sound like they're dying. The dollhouse hits total elimination. <laughs> Rebel and Marty throw Barbie Hayden out. Whilst that's going on, Madison kicks Rebel in the vagina. <laughs> Next out is Ali. She hits a bunch of screaming clotheslines to complete silence. Rebel's kicking Madison in the corner, but one of her own kicks knocks her over. Out now it's Sienna who starts destroying everybody. She eliminates Ali who cries on the outside of the ring. Sienna also throws out Rebel seconds later. That's my pick to win this one gone. Rosemary joins the match now. They give her the giant treatment by staring at her in fear. She stupidly starts choking Marty across the ropes of her legs. She slips and then she's kicked out by Madison. Gap Eyes also eliminates Sienna straight after. The final entrant is Jade who looks really happy because she's also a teammate of Marty Bell's. Imagine having to cheer for one of these women. Jade's the obvious pick. Despite being friends, Jade smacks her one. Jade gives Marty a hug to say sorry but then she throws her out. What an idiot. I hate when wrestlers are booked to look like complete brain dead fools. We're down to a singles match now. Jade kicks Madison in the face and applies a submission. Madison fights it off. They head out the ring. Jade breaks the count and screams psych at the referee because we're all idiots for watching this. Madison applies a submission hold. I've never seen this one before. Josh Matthews, her husband, is in complete shock. Anyway, that doesn't end the match. Madison does a weak looking crossbody. Then completely out of nowhere, Jade gets the win with an STO. No hype, no build, no reversals. Here's an STO. It's over. If you don't like it, shove it. Jade is the queen of the knockouts. We now get a god-awful ceremony with JB. He says it's been a long night. Well, he's got that right. She's very happy of her fake crown. It's over. The match as a whole was okay. It's a D. I can't believe I just watched that whole show. At least when I watched World Wrestling All-Stars, there are moments that entertain me because they're so bad that they're funny. Without that Shelly Martinez vs. Rebel match, I would have honestly fallen asleep. Hopefully I never have to watch another one of these one-night-only pay-per-views again. And I hope I've taught you all a wise lesson here. This is why I don't count these shows as matches for Ring of the Hawk, because they happen in a parallel universe to ours. A very boring one. My final grade for One Night Only Knockouts Knockdown 2016 is an S. There were some okay matches, but as a whole, the show needs to be removed from Impact Plus and never watched again. I hope you're taking notes so I can stab you with the pen.